Okay, so um, I am gonna get rid of these uh, fake trees um, because these are these don't interact with uh, anything. So I'm gonna choose walls layer, which these uh, trees are rendered in, and I'm gonna choose the eraser tool, and we'll get rid of these trees. And we're we're gonna add uh, the trees that we can interact with. So to do this, we're gonna go to entities, and now the trees are going to be units. So I'm gonna add an entity. And it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to use the top down unit just because of the uh, perspective here is top down. And I'm going to change the cell sheet. Let's see if you have trees. Oh, yeah, we do. So we got a uh, green tree shrub that we can choose from. Uh, we can also, uh, as you saw before, we can upload images from the computer as well. Um, and we're going to call it tree. And let me take a look at the body size. Uh, 105 by 105, that's pretty reasonable. So we're gonna go ahead and create the tree. All right, so we have a tree idol, uh, tree unit now. And now the next task here is to actually place these trees in the, in the game. And to do that, we'll have to actually go back to the entities and open scripts for the world. And we're gonna create a script that will place a bunch of trees in the game. So this initialized script gets triggered when the game starts. So it runs every time when the game starts. Um, we're going to add an action, which is going to loop, uh, let's say, 30 times. So it, it, this is going to execute the actions inside of this loop 30 times. And we're going to create unit at a position. So we're going to create the unit type of tree or um ooh yeah we gotta create a um a player that we can create this tree for um so what i'm going to do is open the world world's uh, properties and go to global variables add a new and we'll uh create a player variable and we'll set it as a computer one ai for this player um and then we'll go back to script here and we're gonna create a tree for AI player that we just have created. At uh, where are we gonna place these trees, right? So we're gonna place these trees at a uh, at random positions. Uh, in which region? In the entire map. Yeah. So we're gonna place thirty trees. Whoops! I gotta define the rotation of the unit as well. So we're going to um, place thirty trees in random places in the game uh, when the game starts. So let's take a look. Uh, and see if uh, if this works. All right, yeah. So now I can uh, I can see a bunch of trees in the game, uh, movable trees. <laughs> These trees are not meant to move like this. So we'll change these trees' bodies so they are static. So we'll open, we're gonna open the trees' properties and go to body type and change that to static body uh, we're gonna save that and save it and we're gonna republish the game and let's try to push the trees again and great you can't push them anymore so this is expected um now we want to be able to interact with, with the tree uh, um, so right now when I press left click, my fists are moving, but it's not doing anything to the tree. So I'm going to open the entities and then go to my punch item and make sure that the weapon is able to affect its target, which is tree. So uh, it says targets affected is everything. So it means it should be able to attack um, uh, whether if it's a hostile, friendly, or neutral unit. So it should be attacking this tree right now. Uh, maybe it is affecting it, and we just can't see the reaction from the tree. So we're going to open the tree and go under Effects. And uh, on Attack the Event, what we'll do is we'll play a twinning animation uh, of a recoil so that uh, the tree will get pushed backwards uh, whenever it is attacked. So we'll save that as well, and we'll refresh the game again. 
And let's go ahead and attack the tree. Oh, look, it is interacting with our uh, weapon, which is pretty awesome. Seeing the tree move is great, but I want to actually be able to gather some resources from this tree. So what I'll do is I'll create a script for the trees so that whenever it is attacked, it will provide wood to its attacker. So uh, we'll name this script as when attacked. And the trigger is uh, um, under the attack event. So when this entity gets attacked, uh, what we'll do is we'll give um, wood to the attacker. Now, we haven't defined wood yet. So I'm going to hold this off for now. I'll actually save this script for now. And then we'll go to world and go to player type, which this is the, the human player, uh, default player type that's in the game. Um, and we'll create an attribute. So right now there are two attributes, speed and health. And these are actually not assigned to the player. Um, the, the speed and health is sort of like a default attribute that's assigned to the unit. Um, speed determines how fast this unit can move. Um, health isn't really used in this game. Um, but yeah, going back to the world, whoops, uh, opening player, we're going to uh, create a new attribute and we'll call it wood. And the default value is going to be zero. And um, I'll just set the maximum value as something really high. Uh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, we've got to make sure it's visible um, so that we can actually see the values in the bottom right corner. And we'll save it. And um, now I, I know that uh, we created the AI player, but we actually haven't assigned the AI player to a player type. Player types are great uh, for assigning different um, factions and uh, alliances between the player types. So just to give you an example here, um, I will create an AI player um that's ai hoss uh, neutral for now um and we're not gonna display the name and we'll save it so yeah we created the ai neutral and uh, one more thing that i'm going to do um, just bear with me for now uh, we're gonna open scripts for the world and when the game begins we are going to assign the ai player the global variable to the AI neutral. Okay. And now that we have created the attribute for the AI player, we should be able to go back to the tree scripts and then go under when attacked event. And when this entity gets attacked, what we'll do is we'll um, set the player attribute. Uh, which is going to be wood that we just created uh, of a player. So this is going to be the player that owns the attacking unit. So owner of a unit, which is going to be the attacking unit. And we'll set that value as calculate. And it's going to be something plus something. You can actually change the, uh, the oper uh, operator here as well. Uh, but plus is fine and it's going to be plus one so we'll add one to the existing player attribute value which here it's going to be wood and the uh, same thing owner of a unit uh the attacking unit okay so we'll increment the wood um by one every time the tree is attacked we'll save this um Save this script as well, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, restart the game. Oh, looks like somebody has joined the game, and he's been attacking me, it seems. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways, I'm going to republish the game. There we go. All right, so now we can actually see the word variable. And um, I actually gone up by one. I don't know if I attacked this tree accidentally. Uh, but yeah, every time I attack the tree, now you can see that the wood value going up. Okay, and when I stop, the value stops going up. And I attack this tree, and yeah, you can watch me gathering resource here. So I'll end the tutorial 
here. Um, and in our next video, I'll add more objects that uh, we'll be able to interact with in this world. Thanks for watching.